Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. I know, it's been months since I've done any PS Vita videos, but I think today is the day to break that streak. I've been messing around with PS Vitas for a few months now, and I've definitely learned a lot along the way, and so I've decided to start up a series of videos that'll show you how to unlock the potential of this handy little device. I've been watching the used marketplace on eBay for a while now, and I've noticed that the prices keep going up and up. So if you have any interest of checking out a Vita in order to play PS Vita games, PSP games, or PS1 games in particular, this first guide is going to be really helpful. I'm going to show you how to permanently mod or jailbreak your device. And this is one of the biggest barriers that I had when I first got my PS Vita. Because even though there are a lot of guides out there, the problem is that there are a lot of guides out there. And I found that none of them were a perfect solution for what I needed in terms of getting everything set up. And that's what I'm setting out to do with this video series, is to create one single location that has easy and clear guides on how to set up your PS Vita. So I'm pretty excited about this, and we got a lot of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and knock it out. So you might be asking, why do you even need to mod a PS Vita? Well, here are my six top reasons. Number one is you can install an app called Adrenaline, and this is basically a PSP environment on your PS Vita. It allows you to play PSP games as well as PS1 games with perfect native performance. And of course, you can also play PS Vita games. And if you mod your PS Vita, you're able to run backups of PS Vita games. So instead of having to switch out cartridges all the time, you can just load them up into one single source and then play them from there. And in order to do that, you can actually use an SD card. You use this little adapter that costs six bucks called the SD2 Vita. And you can only set this up if you have a device that's been modded. Now, once you have a modded Vita, you can install all sorts of additional apps. For example, you can put RetroArch on this device. And you can also install plugins that will allow you to tweak some of the features on your device. For example, you can set it up to do video out. And finally, the community has created all sorts of native ports that run perfectly on the PS Vita. All three of the Grand Theft Auto 3 games work, as well as Max Payne, and a bunch of others. So all in all, I think there are plenty of reasons why it's in your best interest to try to mod a Vita. And one of my favorite things about modding a Vita is that it doesn't take away any features. So you can still use your regular PlayStation account, earn trophies, all those things. Now today on my website, I'm actually already going to release a pretty in-depth PS Vita written guide. And it'll show you how to do most of the things I just talked about. But in this video in particular, I'm going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to show you how to downgrade the firmware on the Vita, so that way you can do the permanent mod. And two, we're going to do the actual mod itself. Now if you have an original PS Vita 1000, you're going to have to use an official Sony memory card. And it doesn't matter what size you get, the smaller the better, but you're going to have to go and grab one of those off of eBay. If you have a PS Vita 2000, like the one here in this video, it has its own internal storage, you don't have to worry about that. And then you're also going to need to use a micro USB cable, which is connected to your computer. Okay, let's go ahead and prepare your PS Vita for this process. First thing you want to do is go into the settings and check a couple things. Let's go ahead and hit the settings button, and then hit start. And first we want to make sure that you're connected to the internet. You're going to need to have a Wi-Fi connection in order to download certain apps on your device itself, so make sure you're connected. After that, scroll all the way down to the bottom till you find the System section. Within there, select System Information and then look at your software version. If you have 3.65, you don't need to downgrade. If you have anything above 3.65, you're going to need to upgrade it to 3.73. As you can see here, my device already has 3.73 on it. So if you have a firmware that's between 3.66 and 3.72, go ahead and scroll up to the system update and then run the system update using Wi-Fi. As you can see, I can't upgrade anymore because I have 3.73. Okay, and that's all the preparation you need to do. You need to make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi and then we need to know whether or not you need to downgrade your firmware. Because I have 3.73, we're gonna downgrade the firmware on my device. Okay, so going back to the written guide on my website, which I'll have linked in the video description, you'll see that I have everything written in a chronological order. It'll say the required tools and the required files, everything else. Let's start downloading some of these required files. We're gonna start with QCMA. This is an app that allows your computer to communicate with the PS Vita. All you have to do is click on the link and then download the most recent version of either the EXE version if you're using Windows or the DMG version if you're using Mac. I recommend setting up a dedicated folder on your computer. Maybe make it something memorable like peanut butter, whatever floats your boat. Go ahead and save your file into here. And then we're just going to go down the line and download all the other ones on my written guide. And this guide is going to work on Mac or Windows. Next, we're going to download Enzo. This is the one that gives you the permanent mod on your PS Vita.
Next, we're going to get one called Final H Encore. This one runs the initial jailbreak on your device. Now, because we're going to downgrade to 3.65 system firmware, we're going to use these two scripts here in order to trick the device into thinking that it's actually running 3.73. This will make sure that every game you try to run is going to run perfectly. So just go ahead and download both of these scripts. Now, there are two specific files we need to use in order to downgrade. The first app is called Modoru, and that's actually the downgrading app. Just go ahead and get the most recent version of this one. And then we also need the official firmware file from Sony themselves. This is going to be the 3.63 firmware. And you may notice in this video here, I accidentally downloaded 1.65, but I fixed the link on this, so you're not going to have any issues with it. But if you see a 1.65, just remember you need to download the 3.65. That was just a dumb error on my part. Now I could talk all day about how it wouldn't be a retro game core video if I didn't mess at least one thing up. Now hopefully this is the only thing I messed up in the whole video. I think we're good. Okay, so now once you're done downloading the 3.65 firmware, let's go ahead and move on. First thing we want to do is make sure we can see every hidden file that we need to see. So open up your Windows Explorer, go over to View, and then Options. Within here, go into View, and then make sure it says Show Hidden Files, Folders, blah blah blah. And then make sure all these settings that say something about hiding things, go ahead and uncheck all of those. Even if it gives you a warning, just go ahead and uncheck them. We want to see every hidden thing we can see to make sure we can access every file we need. All right, so let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with installing QCMA. This is the app that allows your computer to communicate with the PS Vita itself. So it's gonna run a startup script. Just go ahead and follow all the prompts. And once it's done installing, it'll say completing the setup. Go ahead and click that run QCMA button. And that's it, now you're good to go. Next, we're gonna extract the final H Encore file. So I'm going to extract it using WinRare. I'm just going to right click on it, select Extract Files, and then hit OK. It's going to make its own folder here. And then within that folder, you're going to find the app itself. Go ahead and open it up. It may ask you if you want to allow access, say yes. You can also right click on it and select Run as Administrator. And you're going to want to leave this window open for most of the entire install process. OK, so back at the PS Vita here, we're just going to plug it into the computer using the USB cable. And then we want to go into this Content Manager app and then select Copy Content. And it's going to show you this screen here, which indicates that you are connected to your computer. If you don't see this screen, I would restart your computer and then open up QCMA as well as the Final Age Encore again. Okay, so back on your computer here, you can see that it says connected to the PS Vita at 3.73 firmware. Select the Trim H Encore and then hit Let's Go. It'll take a bit to download and install this file. But once it says 100%, you're good to go. Let's go back to the PS Vita and actually install the H Encore onto the device. You're going to select this PC to PS Vita, then Applications, then PS Vita, and then there's the H Encore. Just check it and then hit Copy. Okay, once it's installed, you just go ahead and hit the PS Vita Home button and close out the app. And there it is, you can see H Encore. I recommend you unplug your device for this part. Go ahead and start up the app, and it's going to give you a warning about trophies. Don't even worry about this. You're going to see this warning like 10 times. It's going to do this weird thing, and then it opens up in this small text. So select Install Henkaku, and then Download Vita Shell. And that's it. Once those two are done, go ahead and exit out. Now, back on our device, you can see that Vita Shell has been installed. And let's also double check that the Henkaku settings are now available. When you go into your settings app, you should see it as the second thing there, Henkaku settings. While you're in here, go ahead and select Enable Unsafe Homebrew. And that's it. Close out of your settings. And let's jump into Vita Shell. Vita Shell is basically a very robust file browser for your device. This will basically allow you to access everything within your Vita from your computer. So you can move files back and forth and everything else. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug our device back into our computer. And then you want to hit the select button in order to make the USB connection. And it'll say USB connected there. Now back on your computer, you're going to see a new window pop up and it's going to act like a USB drive. So let's go over to our peanut butter folder. 
and we're going to move over the Midoru Downgrader VPK into our Vita folder. Now, if you go ahead and hit the X button to disconnect, and you go into the UXO folder, and scroll all the way down, you should see Midoro there. Go ahead and hit the circle button to start it up, and then hit yes to confirm. It's gonna give you another warning. You say, yeah, man, I wanna do it, and then you do the installation. Once the installation's complete, you can go ahead and close out of Vita Shell, and there's Midoro. Now we just wanna run Midoro one time in order to install certain folders onto our device. Once that's done, go ahead and hit the PS Vita home button and close out the app and then go back into Vita Shell. We're gonna hit select again to connect to our computer, and then we'll go back to our computer and move over some files. So now go to your PS Vita official firmware file, open up the zip folder, and then there's another zip folder underneath that just says official firmware 3.65.zip. Open that up again, and then there you have your pup file here. This is the actual update file for the PS Vita. Move that over into the peanut butter folder. And then on your PS Vita folder, go into this hidden app folder. And then the folder that starts with the word Midoru. And then within here, drag over that pup file. This is going to allow Midoru to run a downgrade down to 3.65. Okay, so once that's been moved over, let's go ahead and close out the USB connection and unplug our device. So now let's go back into the Midoru app. I found most times when you try to go into Midoro right here, it's still going to give you this disable error, and so that won't allow you to downgrade the firmware. So the easy fix to that is just to restart your PS Vita. Hold down the power button, do the power off, and then power it back on. Now because we haven't done a permanent mod yet, we're going to have to open up H Encore again in order to establish our jailbreak again. All you have to do is just start up this app, and then once it's in the main menu, just go ahead and select exit. Now you're good to go. So now let's go back into Midoro, and you can see here everything's working. It shows the current firmware, 3.73, the factory firmware on the device, and then what our target firmware is, which is 3.65. It's going to ask you, do you want to do it? And you hit X, and then it gives you the longest disclaimer ever and basically says, do you really want to do this? And it'll wait 20 seconds, and then you just go ahead and hit the X button to say, yeah, man, I want to do it. And then it's going to run through the entire system update process. And just like that, you've downgraded to 3.65. Let's go into our settings and verify. We're going to scroll all the way down to the system settings, then system information, and there we are, 3.65. So how cool is that? So one thing about having 3.65 is that your PS Vita is going to constantly remind you to upgrade to 3.73. So there's a very easy way to prevent this. Go into the network settings, then Wi-Fi settings, and then select your Wi-Fi network, and then go into advanced settings. Here you wanna go into the DNS settings. It's already set to automatic, change that to manual. Within here, you're gonna have a primary DNS number. This is the number you wanna use, 212.47.229.76. Now don't ask me how I figured this out. I just read it somewhere else, but anyway, it works. After that, you're good to go. You're not gonna get any update prompts from then on. At this point, we have successfully downgraded to 3.65 and we're ready to run the jailbreak. First thing you wanna do is delete all the apps we've already installed. You just hold on to the button here and then hit the little three dot icon and then select delete for each of these. Okay, here we are. Let's actually start the jailbreaking process. Plug in your device into the computer, go into content manager and select copy content. And then once you're successfully at this window, go ahead and go back to your computer. And then we're going to run the H Encore installation again. Go ahead and select the trim H Encore to 7 megabytes, and then the Let's Go button. And you can see it says connected to PS Vita at 3.65, which shows you're downgraded. Okay, once the installation is done, go back to your PS Vita, select the PC to PS Vita, Applications, PS Vita, and then there's H Encore. And then just go ahead and hit the Copy button again, and then Confirm. We can close out a content manager now, and we should see at the bottom here a new version of H Encore. This time it's blue instead of red. You're going to get the same trophy error, just go ahead and hit yes. Now if the app doesn't open up when you're trying to open it, the trick is to hold down on the R button while opening it.
Okay, so once we're in the menu, we're gonna do the same thing we did previously. We're gonna install Henkaku and then download Vita Shell. Now on this device in particular, I was having a problem downloading Vita Shell. It kept giving me this one error. And I read up on it and it sounds like this happens pretty often. This didn't happen with my PS Vita 1000, but it did happen with my PS Vita 2000. So there's a really good installation guide, which I'll have linked in my written guide here. And this will show you how to manually install Vita Shell in the same kind of process that we did with H Encore. And I'm running through this manual installation right now, but as you can see here, it's the exact same process as it was when we installed H Encore. If you're able to successfully download Vita Shell, you don't have to do any of this stuff. It'll just work automatically. So either way, if it worked in H Encore, if you manually did it, this is what it's gonna look like. Here is your Vita Shell. So let's jump into it and finish this permanent mod process. We're almost done at this point. Same thing as before, when you're in Vita Shell, just go ahead and hit select to make that USB connection. And then let's move over to our PC and finish the process. So within here, we wanna move over the Enzo VPK. This is the permanent mod. You can also delete any other VPKs you have in there, like the Medora one. And then finally, go into this TIE folder, T-A-I, and move over those two scripts that we downloaded earlier. These are gonna trick your PS Vita into thinking it's running 3.73. Okay, once you're done, go ahead and hit the X button to disconnect. You can unplug your device at this point. And then select the Enzo VPK, hit circle to confirm, and then let it run the installation. Now close out Vita Shell and there we go, there's Enzo. So go ahead and click on Enzo and start it up. And at this point you'll see the tiniest font ever made. And it's basically saying, hey, hit circle if you're okay with downloading Enzo. At this point, go ahead and hit X to do the permanent install of this mod. When it's done, it's gonna say press any key to exit. And there you are. Every time you boot up the device from now on, you're gonna see the little molecule logo instead of the PlayStation logo. So congratulations, you now have a permanently modded PS Vita. Let's go into the settings and verify. We're gonna scroll all the way down again, go into the system settings, system information. So there we are, 3.65 and a couple letters in kanji, you're good to go. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. We got a lot more things we can do, but I don't think you wanna hear me yammering on for any longer than this. This is really just the start of a wonderful relationship with a modded PS Vita. Later on, I'm gonna show you how to do things like installing your own SD card so you can have something like 256 gigs running, and then also installing apps like RetroArch to play retro games. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.